Hello, hello. So happy to see you once more. Welcome to the third episode of Why You Should Come to Arcadia. You have made it halfway. In this episode, we are going to talk about the Enlightenment. It has been done many times, you say. Well, have you seen it done with random Marvel analogies in under five minutes? Yeah, I don't think so. So let's not waste any more time and travel through the quantum realm. Although we know the exact moment when half the population vanished into thin air, we can't pin down exactly when the Enlightenment began. While it is generally considered to have started around the late 17th century, its seed was planted in the Renaissance, where classical Greek and Roman philosophy and literature were rediscovered, and humanism gradually stepped on the world stage. Its roots continued to grow along the age of discovery, the Reformation, and the scientific discoveries throughout the 16th and early 17th century, and with Sir Isaac Newton's Principia Mathematica published in 1686, the Enlightenment, an age of unprecedented optimism and insatiable thirst for knowledge, began to bloom. Indeed, it was an age shining bright with ingenuity, where great thinkers with diverse and revolutionary ideas appeared one after another. They were essentially the Avengers, but instead of superpowers and advanced technology, they had superminds and unmatched rationality. And instead of fighting the omnipotent Thanos, they are fighting the almighty villain Ignorose. Yeah, I mean Ignorose. I'm just trying to rhyme. Never mind. The Roman poet Horace's famous quote, Sapere Aude, meaning dare to know, became the motto of the age. As Immanuel Kant shouted in his essay, What is the Enlightenment? Habe Mut, dich deines eigenen Verstandes zu bedienen! The Enlightenment encouraged people to rely on their own reason rather than looking to priests and princes to decide how to act in the world. And the reason here, as defined by the meme lord Dr. Samuel L. Jackson, so, sorry, Dr. Samuel Johnson, is the power by which man deduces one proposition from another, or proceeded from premises to consequences. With this spirit at heart, the Enlightenment challenged the old authorities and brought new thinking to the world. In regard to religion, the lens of reason introduced an innovative view on Christianity and deism the belief in God as a watchmaker who merely wound up the world and left it to its own device came into being. As for politics, skepticism towards absolute monarchy swept over Europe as philosophers and scholars re-evaluated the functions of the government and contemplated over the rights of the people. In England, John Locke wrote of every person's natural right to life, liberty and property, and Thomas Hobbes' Leviathan took a look on state power and social structures. In France, Jean-Jacques Rousseau proposed the influential idea of social contract, and Voltaire advocated for freedom of speech and separation of church and state. There are still innumerable Avengers, I mean, philosophers, left out, but all of their ideas contributed to the richness of the Enlightenment, and paved the way for the American Revolution in 1776 and the French Revolution in 1789. However, the greater the belief, the greater the disillusionment, And truly, as Tom Stoppard wrote in Arcadia, in the end, the Enlightenment was a century of intellectual rigour turned in on itself. With the great Lisbon earthquake in 1755 shaking the core of the Enlightenment and casting doubts on deism, and the reign of terror after the triumphant French Revolution completely shattering the optimism and faith in the Enlightenment ideals, at the end of the 18th century, even as remnants of its ideas remain to this day, the light of the Enlightenment faded away. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed this episode where we took a quick peek at the Enlightenment, and hopefully it would not only inspire you to be a person of critical thinking, but also a person who puts ideals into practice, just like Iron Man. Okay, fine, this one's a bit forced. Anyway, as always, stay tuned for the next episode, where we'll talk about the most romantic thing in the history of the world, romanticism. Cheers.